In this video, I will be sharing the top reviews of the book called, Landslide, written by Michael Wolff. This book is on the New York bestseller list for the last two weeks and this book has been getting a lot of limelight due to its controversial topics. But before we get to the review part let's see what this is about. We all witnessed some of the most shocking and confounding political events of our lifetime. The careening last stage of Donald J. Trump's re-election campaign. The president's audacious election challenge. The harrowing mayhem of January 6. The buffoonery of the second impeachment trial. But what was really going on in the inner sanctum of the White House during these calamitous events? What did the president and his dwindling cadre of loyalists actually believe? And what were they planning? Michael Wolff pulled back the curtain on the Trump presidency with his number one best-selling blockbuster Fire and Fury. Now, in Landslide, he closes the door on the presidency with a final, astonishingly candid account. Wolf embedded himself in the White House in 2017 and gave us a vivid picture of the chaos that had descended on Washington. Almost four years later, Wolf finds the Oval Office even more chaotic and bizarre, a kind of Star Wars bar scene. At all times of the day, Trump, behind the resolute desk, is surrounded by schemers and unqualified sycophants who spoon-feed him the alternative facts. He hungers to hear about COVID-19, Black Lives Matter protests, and, most of all, his chance of winning re-election. Once again, Wolf has gotten top-level access and takes us front row as Trump's circle of plotters whittles down to the most enabling and the president reaches beyond the bounds of democracy as he entertains the idea of martial law and box at calling off the insurrectionist mob that threatens the institution of democracy itself. As the Trump presidency's hold over the country spiraled out of control, an untold and human account of desperation, duplicity, and delusion was unfolding within the West Wing. Landslide is that story as only Michael Wolf can tell it. Now let's see some reviews. Chris from New York says here is the madness of the last months of the Trump presidency in all its idiocy, ignominy, perfidy, and spectacular dishonesty. Here is Trump himself, of course, but also his hangers-on, yes people, and the hypocrites who insisted with false righteousness that they were attempting to be the grown-ups in the room. What was the most fun for me? The scenes where there were just two people, so you knew precisely who was throwing Agent Orange under the bus, or the lengthy interview with Trump himself that Wolf shares. And the best part of reading this chronicle? The relief that he's gone. Lois from the United States says this is really funny and had a solid 3.5 rating from me until the end. I do not understand the need to not ever hold white men responsible for their actions. Furthermore the suggestion that Trump is charismatic also seems to be a bomb to white men who don't want to own that Trump is obnoxious unless you are also a bigot. He appeals to people who are already bigoted. They like his open and unashamed a wholeness. Holding him accountable for his actions is fair. He has barely been held responsible for any of his many crimes. His problem retaining attorneys was due to his habit of refusing to pay them after he received their services. Jill Meyer from the States says I'm not going to write about my feelings, personal and political, about Donald Trump, but rather if Michael Wolff's new book, Landslide, is worth reading. This is, after all, a book review, and my feelings about Trump really shouldn't matter. Michael Wolff has written three books about the Trump presidency. As a journalist, he knows both how to write and what to include in his writing. This is very important because there's so much out there, that any biography of Trump would, could collapse under its own weight. Michael Wolff's book goes into Donald Trump's last few months and months in the office along with the spicy anecdotes we've come to expect from a tell-all. Should you buy Michael Wolff's book? Why not? Like all his work, it's superbly written, and is a pleasure to read, no matter what your political beliefs. Susan Tunis from San Francisco says having read the two prior books in Mr. Wolf's Trump trilogy on publication day, I didn't see the point in stopping now. Once more into the breach. Barely six months past the 2020 election and its aftermath, I've already read thousands of pages on these events. Is there anything more to be learned? Years from now will I still be obsessing over the events of the Trump era like those obsessives sifting through each frame of the Zap Ruder film? In short, is this book even worth reading? I think so. I haven't been watching much television as this book launches, but I don't feel like it's been quite as splashy. There are fewer sound bites on the news. Well, for one thing, 
he's got more competition this time around, with two other Trump-related titles launching within a week. And, yes, I will be reading them all. It actually amazes me that with each of these Wolf books, when readers were convinced we'd seen maximum Trump craziness, the former president would manage to raise the stakes for the next book. It's gotten to the point that even the most yellow journalist is unable to exaggerate or hyperbolize reality. It simply isn't possible. In the face of this, Mr. Wolf basically just writes the facts. He lays things out in a way that's orderly, but compelling. And, of course, the anonymous sources that we, and Mr. Wolf, have come to rely on our back. But they aren't playing as big a role as in the past. I should mention, BTW, that I listen to this as an audiobook. One of the nice things about the format is that rather than quoting various people in text, actual audio of them speaking can be heard. Clark from Florida says as a news junkie and concerned citizen, I paid close attention to the Trump presidency and knew it would end disastrously. It was obvious that, because of the antiquated electoral college system, we were going to get stuck with someone incompetent and inappropriate, someone way too stupid, ignorant and unprepared to be president. And worse, Trump was someone who was unhinged, mentally ill, narcissistically wounded and untethered to reality. His own son-in-law called him, crazy. Trump was something like our own Mad King George and like other Mad Kings, he was enabled by sycophants and opportunists. He did not win the popular vote but was elected by an embittered, racist, low-information mob, who like Trump, had the same sense that they deserved more than they had actually achieved. It is because Trump was born into a wealthy family that he got away with his delusions, with his incessant lying, his cruelty. And it is only because the masses are gullible that he was able to con them into buying his own mad imaginings, even as Trump detested them as low class, and, the great unwashed, or, hillbillies. Now we are at the end of this and I would just like to say that this book has been receiving a lot of good comments from the Democrats' supporters and some negative comments from the Trump supporters. It's up to you if you want to read this type of content or not. Thanks for watching.